After a month had passed, I had nearly filled the swimming pool at the abandoned chateau. I remember I had just emptied a sack of eels into the darkened water when I turned and found somebody watching me. She was perched on the edge of the ornamental balcony as though she was about to take flight, her saffron kimono wavering like wings on the updraft from the swollen Thames far below. Her obsidian eyes hovered above a white satin mask, and there came faint music from the tortoiseshell rings on her fingers and the anklets that were loosely tethered to her bare legs. She spoke little, but later we sat together for some time, watching the psychedelic mists rolling in from the south. I found her company soothing, though melancholic, as if she too had a tattered story trailing behind her. She wouldn't come fishing with me in the mornings, saying she preferred the clearer air of the hills and loved to look down at the curling mists. She had a curious habit of collecting petals, particularly the wild rose, which grew profusely on the peninsula, and she would scatter these coloured fragments of beauty around the villa until it smelt like a garden overflowing with flowers. I became more and more fond of her as the days went by. There was a mystery about her too. There were tiny wrinkles around her eyes betraying an age much greater than I had first thought. The tracks of her tears, telling of unspoken tales, or perhaps only electric dreams.